welcome to geography class here in this video we are going to discuss weathering you must have heard few terms like erosion denudation degradation and weathering however they are different processes and they are very closely linked they are responsible for the formation of different types of land features on the surface of the earth now let's take a look at each of these terms and what they mean first we are going to discuss the denudation now what is denudation denudation or degradation is the process by which rock materials from the earth surface are removed as a result you can see the general lowering of the land surface now where those materials are going these materials are then deposited in depressions such as valleys lakes and seabeds so gradually the depressions fill up and the level of the surface rises this process is known as aggradation now together these two processes are known as gradation i repeat degradation and aggradation together known as gradation now we are going to learn what is weathering weathering is the process by which rocks on the land surface break down or crumble because of the action of the elements of weather now what are these elements they are rain frost and temperature changes now please remember this process involves physical as well as chemical actions weathering occurs in situ now what do you mean by in situ weathering occurs at that place where the rocks are present and so doesn't involve any movement of weathered rocks so in a short we can tell weathering doesn't allow any movement now what is erosion erosion follows the process of weathering that means erosion is the process by which weathered materials are transported by the agents like running water moving ice waves and winds now what is the basic difference between weathering and erosion weathering doesn't allow any movement or transportation but erosion allows movement there are various factors which influence weathering in an area now what are these factors these are local climate the composition of minerals structure of rocks vegetation cover in the area amount of exposed rock surface and obviously the human activities there are mainly three types of weathering these are physical weathering chemical weathering and biological weathering and these processes are very closely interrelated first we are going to discuss the physical weathering in this type of weathering rocks break up or disintegrate without any change in their chemical composition another name of physical weathering is mechanical weathering or disintegration at first we are going to learn granular disintegration if you take the word grains it will be easier for you now let's understand it very deeply this type of weathering is very common in desert region that means in any region where the 
difference between daytime temperature and nighttime temperature is very high. Maybe daytime temperature is 50 degree centigrade and nighttime temperature is only 5 degree centigrade or 10 degree centigrade. Now you already know that rocks are composed of different minerals. So during daytime rocks expand as the minerals within the rocks expand. But during night time the rocks shrink as minerals within the rocks shrink. So if you continuously do exercises after a certain period of time I think you will feel tired, right? Now the same thing is applicable for rocks. After a certain period of time rocks become weak and their grains loosen and fall out because of the alternate heating and cooling. Now the next one exfoliation. Exfoliation is also similar. So when rocks are composed of minerals layer by layer. Suppose the first layer is composed of mineral A. Second layer is composed of mineral B and so on. Now during daytime the outer layer will get maximum heat. As a result it will also expand more but the next layer will remain relatively cold. Exfoliation occurs due to the expansion of the outer layer during the day and the contraction of the same layer during night. Repeatedly it is happening over a period of time. As a result, the surface layer of the rounded rocks or boulders gradually peel off in layers. Similarly to the peeled layer of an onion, geographically which is known as exfoliation. Now the last one, frost action. Now where we can see the presence of frost action in the temperate latitudes. Now where is temperate latitudes? Here in this map you can see the region which is situated between the equatorial region that means the tropical region and the polar region that is known as the temperate latitudes. Please remember frost action need the availability of water as well as frost. Now how does it occur? So most of the rocks have cracks and joints. So especially during rainy season rainwater collects in them. So during daytime water remains water only but during the night the fall in temperature results in the freezing of this water in the joints and pores. So obviously when water turns into ice it expands by one tenth of its volume. So as a result this exerts pressure on the wall of the crack. So the cracks widen and deepen gradually. But again the following morning the frost thaws and the water goes deeper in the crack. Thus the repeated freezing and thawing results in the widening of the cracks which break up the rock into angular fragments which is known as frost action. That's all about physical weathering. Next geography class we are going to learn chemical weathering and biological weathering. I hope this content is easier and interesting for you. Okay, stay happy, stay safe. I'm going to meet you very soon. Bye.